Hey guys, we'll have a look at some auction material. Tacoma. Those 1980s sure represented a good style for the Caterpillar loaders, as I have mentioned before. Excavators in the early 1980s were still trying to find themselves. I don't think it was till about 85, 86, they really started to become a superpower, a force to be reckoned with. And more competitive with each other, new brands showing up. Those are big. They did the 990 as well, just monsters. I guess we should turn a page here. Definitely an American version for the canopy. Up here, they were all square. That'd be the granddaddy of the Terex loaders. Biggest one they made. And that was Case's biggest loader too. They did a W36, W26, I think a W18 it was called, a little one. The ABC up here, British Columbia Ministry of Transportation and Highways up through the 80s had fleets of those loaders. Very 1987 in Washington, only one logging truck. The timber industry must have been in between hiccups then. And the Draught 50. They did a Draught shoot, was it an 80? They did a Draught 120, there was a Draught 40, Draught 35. All with a similar cab. Badger Cranes also had the same cab design. That is a big ditch witch. Looks like Shelby Stanga's swamp logging vehicle he had. Just for a tire scale. And there they go, all their little R1s, the romper, the romper, the rascal. I guess they didn't call one a reject or any other foul term, but if they stopped making models when they ran out of R words. Only one logging truck, but no stakes in Surrey. Missed more than a few days of school back in this era to go to the, these sales. My school teachers hated it. My dad would give me a note and like, please excuse Todd from school today. Or, you know, we put one of the family trucks or a piece of gear, we're going to the auction. Oh, they hated it. They couldn't really say anything, but they did not like it. I think it was almost a threat to the teachers that a young kid knew what he wanted to do and was making room to do it in his schedule. I never 
everybody knew the railway tracks were right past here. You had to walk, walk across them. And any gear they put on the other side of the railway tracks, they wouldn't run over the ramp. Imagine out of fear of it stalling on the tracks. Sparmac. Don't know anything about that company other than having seen it in the Ritchie Flyer here. Cool name. Good looking cat. It's an oldie. The Swamp Cat. 36 inch tracks. Pads. Those things had extensions on the idlers, a little stubby shaft that came out. And I built a few of them up. Well, yeah, I built a couple of them up back at the John Deere shop when I hung out there as a youngster in high school. Build them up with beads of weld and they'd turn them down. I don't know where all these went. You'd never even see one today. Of course, that's what I grew up on. Exact, a B model, exact same setup. Everybody had one. And that's a big, big front blade for a grater. Obviously just for snow. Or for not seeing the vehicle you're gonna hit in a head on crash. Block screen. Our tank drills, bush gear, and a Chapman in the wrong color. They're a big machine, the Chapman. 1800. Usually they were blue, blue and white. always wanted to run one of these when I was younger. Well, to this day I'd love to, but life doesn't permit. They've become pretty much obsolete. Everybody always said that is the hardest machine to run. You got your feet and your arms going, you got your knee going on the throttle, your feet on the brakes, and your hands on the air controls. So I was like, well, if it's that hard, sign me up. So I can't think of anything more cool challenge than something that's too hard to be done. articulated trucks the Volvos pretty much sent these things a packing used to be lots of those around but the Volvo will turn around on a roadway whereas that those things won't they need 40 acres to turn around on d3 spent some time when I was 16 17 worked for a guy named Ian he had one it would actually hire me at that young age. I don't know if I was old enough to even be out on townhouse sites backfilling them. We'd do that during high school and summers a little bit for him, a friend of my dad's. His was a 1988, had the plus three warranty sign on it. It was hard on the wrist though, the left wrist, because you had to, your decelerator was on the T handle and it was on the power shift, the one, two, three, back and forward. So you're always cranking on your wrist and, torque in your shoulder. Alright, I'll hold it there.